In the 10th video, we are going to work on the clocks that will be distributed in the stage and that the character will be able to collect to obtain more time. To solve the problem, we are going to use the system we made in the previous video, in which each piece of the labyrinth knows where to place the object. The latest field is available to test on the website, along with the two scripts we work on in this video. There's a link in the description. If you are interested in following the project, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Let's start by assigning some tags. To the control object, we assign the default tag game controller and to the character prefab the tag player. We create a new script and give it the name clock. Eliminate the update method and then we define the attributes. We need a string for the character stack, a float for the lifetime of the clock. A game object for the piece of the labyrinth in which the clock appears, and a game control type object to be able to execute methods that we'll define in that script. Let's define all the necessary methods of the clock class. We need a public method to assign the lifetime. Inside, we'll simply write lifetime equals to the value that comes as parameter. We define a method to destroy the clock when its lifetime runs out. We need a collect method. And the onTriggerEnter method to detect if the character passes through the trigger collider assigned to the clock. Using serialized field, we define a game object for the prefab of the clock, an integer for the amount of clocks that will be in the scenario, a float for the lifetime of the clock, an integer for the amount of time that each clock contributes when collecting it. Without using serialized field, we define a list of game objects to keep track of the labyrinth pieces that contain a clock. Now let's define the methods: one to place all the clocks on the stage, another method to place a single clock, a public method that is executed when a clock is destroyed. This method will receive as parameter the piece of the labyrinth in which the clock was. We define a public method that is executed when the character collects a clock. Finally, we define a method to destroy everything that must be destroyed at the end of the game. Let's work on the clock script. In the start method, we find the reference of the game control component that is between the components of the control object. Remember, the control object has the game controller tag assigned. Then we invoke the self-destruction method using the lifetime and adding a random value between 0 and 1 to prevent all the clocks from being destroyed in the same frame. In the self-destruction method, we are going to execute the clock destroy method defined in the game control script. We pass as parameter the labyrinth piece, and then we destroy this game object. In the collect method, we cancel the invocations and then execute the clock collected method defined in the game control script. Finally, we execute the self-destruction method. In the onTriggerEnter method, we check if the tag of the collider that came in contact is equal to the tag of the character. If this is true, we execute the collect method. Let's work on the game control script. In the method to place all the clocks, first we make sure that the number of clocks to place is less or equal to the number of pieces of the labyrinth. Then, using a for loop, we place all the clocks using the place a clock method. In the place a clock method, we are going to implement a while loop, so we define an exit condition. Instead of reading again the number of labyrinth pieces, that value will be received as a parameter. Inside the while loop, we randomly choose a piece from the labyrinth. If it turns out that the chosen piece is not in the list of pieces with clock, let's make a pause here. It's vital to create the list object. We'll do it in the star game method. 
and then execute the place all the clocks method. Now let's go on. If it turns out that the chosen piece is not in the list of pieces with clock, we add this piece to the list and obtain from it the random position that indicates us through the get random position method. Then we modify that position to give it the height that is defined on the prefab of the clock. We create the instance of the clock prefab. and get the reference of its clock component. We set the level piece and the lifetime to the clock. And finally, we make true the condition to exit the loop. In the clock destroy method, we eliminate from the list the piece of the level that we receive as parameter. Then, we execute the place a clock method to place a new clock. For the clock collected method, we need to extend the functionality of the timer script. So let's define inside timer a public method to add seconds. We go back to the game control script and in the clock collected method, we add the seconds to the timer. The destroy all method will be executed in the end game method. And we move the two destroy instructions to this new method. Then we find all the clocks of the scenario and destroy them using a for each loop. Place the clock prefab in the hierarchy. Create the tag clock and assign it to it. Write 3 in the Y component of the position and apply the changes. I almost forgot to assign the script clock and write the characters tag. Now we apply the changes. In the control object in the inspector, set the number of clocks at 10, the lifetime at 5, and the time per clock at 3, and then drag the prefab of the clock to its respective space. We need to fill the add seconds method in the timer script. Inside, we increase the seconds. If these are greater than 59, we add a minute and subtract 60 to the seconds. Finally, we refresh the timer. I didn't realize that there was an error in the game control script in the line 184. The problem is that there is no definition of the place a clock method that doesn't have parameters. So in the previous line, I'm gonna read again the number of pieces of the labyrinth and enter it in the method. When I test the game, I see that the clocks appear in the hierarchy, but for some reason I can't find any. The problem is that I'm instantiating them using the quaternion identity for the rotation. Let's use the rotation defined in the clock prefab instead. Now it's working. Only the lifetime and the time each clock gives is very short. So I'm gonna add a few seconds. That's it for now. In the following video we will do something special for Halloween.